afternoon, fellow Toastmasters and honored guest. It is a pleasure for me to be here today to deliver my icebreaker speech. I am in the second half of life. And I know what you're thinking. She's barely out of her 20s. I'm <laughs> happy. And to that I say, oh, thank you. <laughs> I actually just had my birthday last week. Happy birthday. Uh, thank you. And I didn't turn 20. <laughs> so this, came, this speech came in a good time for me to reflect on what I want to share about myself. The second half of life has nothing to do with age. It's actually a state of mind, a state of being. And I think it's worth aspiring to, and perhaps you will too, by the time we're done here today, but of course you don't have to. Since a century after Freud, we're all psychologists. <laughs> Let me explain to you about the unconscious self. In your first half of life, it's characterized, as far as I understand it, by creating order and relating yourself to the outside world. We do what we see, don't we? We emulate the people and the things and the ideals that are important to us and, we, and that society puts forward to say they're important. Nothing wrong with this. And you could probably hazard to guess that for me, I mostly live on the outside of myself. I am wired to achieve. Why else on my first meeting would I do a table topics right out of the gate? <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm in good company here because I don't think in the entire history of Toastmasters there's been one lazy person that's attended. <laughs> Everybody wants to achieve and do well, and that's wonderful. So what my, the point I'm trying to make about the first half of life is that we tend to do the things on the outside of us. And we live up to those. And we often don't think about it in a critical way. Or, sorry, let me repeat myself. Most of us think we have little to say in the matter, or we don't think about it. But I think we do have a say, and we should think about it. And it doesn't mean about losing out on the contrary. The second half of life, in opposite to that, is recognizing that the real you comes from within not without. Who you are destined to be, what you're destined to do, and I do think we're all destined for something. We're all unique, aren't we? It emerges from your soul, from within you. In this busy life, we often just don't take time to slow down and really listen. But something inside is telling you who you are. You see, about a decade ago, I was trying really hard to get somewhere. Very goal-oriented, very outcome-oriented. I wanted a job, I was at school. It's a very common story. But what I learned is that we don't necessarily factor in the things outside of our control. Not when we're young, anyway. When we're on the road of life, we sometimes don't expect delays or setbacks. I think the first half of life, to be put another way, is outcome-based. We're striving towards a particular goal, and we might fall prey to the rigid rigidness of a particular plan. I did. After all, if there was a detour that comes and you don't embrace it, you might miss a wonderful part of the journey that you didn't expect. So for me, I realized I too was living in an outcome-based, performance-driven world almost exclusively. So instead of barreling forward with my blinders on, I surrendered. I said, well, let's transition to the second half of life. A word of caution, though. The transition to second half of life is not for the faint of heart. It requires sacrifice and, surprisingly, the embrace of your limitations. It's a movement contrary to the external factors that the first part of your life are saying, you need to be this, you need to do this. And you push back against that a little bit. If the first half of life is about order, this transition is about a little bit of disorder. It's uncomfortable at times, but I would say it's worth it. Because that healthy dismantling of the world means you become more connected to the things that really matter. Not that job in the future, but the person beside you. And yourself. Really important. So here's a quote from James Hollis who put it another way. James Hollis is a psycho psychologist. And he studied Carl Jung. And the way that's interesting is Carl Jung is so brilliant and fascinating that we need a quote from a quote this morning. And I think that was cool. So here we go. The psychology of the first half of life is driven by the fantasy of acquisition, gaining ego strength to deal with separation, separating from the overt domination of parents, 
acquiring a standing in the world, but the second half of life asks of us and ultimately demands relinquishment. Relinquishment of identification with property, roles, status, and the embrace of other inwardly confirmed values. For me, that means I do a lot more being. We're human beings, right? Not human doings. But we also we tend to, we sometimes forget that. I have an increased awareness of when my ego wants to take over now and it finds its value in something other than what I was meant to be. It's a process, but isn't everything? There's always more to learn and discover and to grow, and I'm grateful for that. That's why we're here, right? And ultimately, we are process people. Once we try to achieve to get to a place, and eventually we would say in that moment, well, now what? That's what we do every time. So the aspect of me of living in the second half of life is at least three things, and I'll close with this. It's a state of being in the moment more, but more often. It is a centering, and there's more peace involved. In any case, I feel like I've entered into a new world that I get to explore on a totally different set of terms. And that is all. Thank you so much.